we're recording. Um, and so this video, I'm going to play it for us, and then we'll just see if we can pull some stuff out of it. Um, yeah, we'll just see what we can find. I think it, I think I just watched like the first four minutes because I sometimes I don't want to watch too much of it because I want to kind of get the same experience as you guys. And I think that sometimes if I watch it and then watch it again, I don't get that. So I kind of like to watch it along with you guys. So let me screen share here. It's funny because I actually have two things pulled up because I was going to originally show you guys one thing and then I decided, and then I started watching this video and I changed my mind. <laughs> Okay, so let me screen share. Okay. So I originally had some Mel Robbins pulled up about the five second rule, but I think um, I'm going to push that to like later in the week. And I think we're going to we're going to watch this one instead. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's see what we can find from this. So this is um, a guy. Let me kind of maybe set it up for you guys. So this guy's name is Robert Koyasaki. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's right. Um, but he writes the book, and it is called uh, Poor Dad, Rich Dad, I believe. And it's all about your mindset about money and the different mindset that you can have um, towards being rich or poor. And so I think it's pretty interesting. All right, I'm gonna press play. Are you a consumer? <laughs> Do the rich people cringe and say, don't tell them that, Rob? Yes, 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 don't tell people what, they, what you know. Right. Keep them poor. My father was the head of education, PhD, all that stuff. I go home and ask him, said, why don't we learn about money in school? And he looked at me and said, because the government doesn't let us teach that subject. The government tells us what we can teach and what we can't teach. And I thought that was strange. And I said, but aren't we going to school to learn about money? He says, no, your job is to get a job. I said, but you get a job to earn money. He goes, no, you're supposed to just get a job. I went, no, 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 no. Isn't the purpose of a job to earn money? He goes, you're correct. I said, so why don't I just learn about money? I can skip the job part, you know? And he got flustered and he said, if you want to learn about money, why don't you ask your best friend's father about money? And I said, why? That's Mike. So I ask him. He says, because Mike's father is an entrepreneur. And I said, what, am, what are you? He says, I'm an employee, I'm a government employee. And I went, oh, what's the difference? He says, the difference is an entrepreneur must know about money, or that they're, they're no longer entrepreneurs. And he says, an employee doesn't have to know anything about money, because the government will take care of them, the company will take care of them. So I'm kid, I'm all confused. But I took my dad's advice and I trundled over to Mike's father's office and knocked on his door and I said, hey, I'm here, nine years old, teach me about money. He says, beat it, kid, you know? But that's where the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad started. And finally, through persistence, my rich dad started teaching me about money on one condition. And that condition was he would never pay me. He says, the moment I pay you, you think like an employee. He says, that's the trap. Entrepreneurs work for free. And now I'm nine years old, my head's going cracking in half. He says, you never want a paycheck. You understand that, kid? I said, okay, I got it. And he says, well, how do I make money? He says, that's what entrepreneurs figure out. <laughs> it's like, so how do I learn about money? So he would just break out a Monopoly game board. So I would work for free. I'd pick up cigarette butts and get hotels and restaurants and I would clean and do menial tasks. And as I got older, I started getting into office work and marketing and accounting. And I was an apprentice basically, but I always worked for free. And he would teach me about money. But the way he taught me about money was playing Monopoly. And I finally, one day I got upset. I said, well, when are you gonna teach me about money? He says, what do you think we're doing? We're playing Monopoly. He goes, no, 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 no. What do you think we're doing? We're playing Monopoly. He says, what do you think we're doing? 
So I don't know. I'm teaching about money. And then that's why, you know, you have one green house. You know, he says, there's many formulas for great success in money. There's thousands of them. But one of the best ones found on the game of Monopoly. It still is today. Four green houses, one red hotel. I said, what? He says, one of the greatest ways to acquire great wealth is playing Monopoly in real life. Four green houses, one red hotel. Went, is that all there is? He goes, that's it. And he says, what do you think I'm doing? And I went, I don't know. So then he took me out and he showed me his green houses. And 10 years later, when I was 19, I was now in school in New York, and I come back to Hawaii and Rich Dad had bought the biggest piece of land smack dab in the middle of Waikiki Beach. And when you go to Waikiki Beach today, you'll see the Hyatt Regency Hotel. That was his hotel. Just like the game of Monopoly. Just like the game of Monopoly. Acquired assets and they became bigger assets. He just kept a, 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 what's called an assemblage because that property wasn't that big at the time. So he had to buy out all the small guys. Because Waikiki was a little dirt water, a little town. So he'd buy out this shop owner and buy that shop owner. And it took him a while, but he finally assembled this large piece of property. And then he then he and Hyatt put up this giant hotel. Mm. You know, and I just and it just okay. sold for eight hundred million dollars. <laughs> so that's how I learned about money. I've had f financial crashes. I've had people stab me in the back, but they're all good because I grow from it. And that's spirituality. Right. You know, people who are afraid of making mistakes like they teach in school, they don't ever grow because spirituality is there's good and there's bad. There's right and there's wrong. There's up and there's down. Most people only want to be right. They only want to be positive. Well, you can't have that. That's not reality. Well, I wasn't poor by most people's standards, but I came from a family with a poor attitude, if you know what I mean, because rich, poor, middle class, poverty starts with a fundamental attitude. Poverty is passed on. It's taught in your families. And middle class is taught in families. And so the people right now who are sitting at home <clears throat> who are struggling financially or worried about money or what is the biggest and most profitable market you can think of? How about this one? Current world. Financially or worried about money or unhappy. They may be making a lot of money, but unhappy with what they're doing. It was probably taught to you. You know, your super ego was taught, get a job, work hard, or you'll, or you'll never be rich, or the rich are evil, or whatever. The school system will never teach you about money. The school system was designed to teach you to be an employee, which is important, or a doctor or a lawyer, a specialist, but never about money. And what most people lack is real business knowledge, like accounting, you know, like debt, like taxes. You gotta know that stuff, but they don't teach it in school to anybody. So, and, and then when people ask me, how did your rich dad learn this when your poor dad, a PhD, didn't? And the answer is very simply, my rich dad was my, my best friend's father. His father died when he was 13. So his so rich dad had this family business at 13 to run. So he had to drop out of school, which was his blessing. You know, those blessings and, you know, sometimes a blessing doesn't look like a blessing, but it turned out to be a blessing. And then his teachers became his bookkeeper, his accountant, his attorney, his banker, his real estate agents. So he has what I call real teachers, not these fake teachers in school. You see, most teachers in school, they're out of ethics. They teach subjects they, don't, they themselves don't practice. I asked the teacher, I said, you know, it's, I'm in my third year of calculus now. It was called, it was called strength of materials. I said, am I ever going to use this stuff? He goes, no. You know, I said, why do you teach it? I, says, I was like, I get paid. I said, do you ever use it? He goes, no. And that's why 
you know, I, you have to, in life, one of the things I suggest to people, you gotta find a real teacher versus a fake teacher. And a fake teacher is somebody who doesn't do what they teach. And a real teacher is doing what they teach every day. So my accountants, my attorneys, they're in it every single day. That's how I learn, because every day I'm solving problems in my business. So I have, I have accountants and attorneys and bankers and all these people on speed dial because I'm, I'm solving problems with my team. I see you giving this knowledge out and yeah. do, do the rich people cringe and say, don't tell them that, Rob? Yes, yes, yes. Don't tell people what, they, what you know. Right. Keep them poor. But, you know, unfortunately, the poor, as was in the Bible, I'm not real religious, the poor will always be amongst us because it starts up here. Right. It's that fear mentality. It's, it's in their words, you know, and the words become flesh. Again, I'm not really religious. I flunked out of Sunday school also. But when they say I can't afford it or I can't do that, they go down. They become what they say. My PhD dad, he says, what do you think I am, made of money? I can't afford that. And my rich dad would say, that's why he's poor. Poor people say, I can't afford it, I can't do that, I don't have time. Because this is an escape. It's an escape, you know what I mean? It's easy to say, I can't afford it. And your rich dad used to say what, instead of, I can't afford it? How can I afford it? How can I do that? You know, what would it take, for, or why should I do that? He says, a, a question opens a mind, a statement closes the mind. See, so when you say, I can't afford it, your mind shuts down, and you become what you say. Rugby is a team sport, but so is soccer. The rules are different. And the other people are golfers, they play by themselves. And so everybody's different. So my game financially is business, number one. Second is real estate. So what I say to young people is, you, you find your game. So I know that's like super different than pretty much anything we've ever listened to, but let's talk about it for a second. Let's like open up, um, because I still think that it has to do a lot with what we've talked about, about mindset. Um, I think it still has a lot to do with what's going on up here, you know, and what is going on up here will determine what happens out here on every level, every level. Your finances, your health, your relationships, however you feel about or think about your relationship is how it's going to be. If you think it's terrible, of course it's gonna be terrible, right? If you think, you know what, I'm gonna do whatever I can to figure out how to love and figure this out, then you're probably going to figure it out. Same thing with like, Money is what he's saying. It's a mindset, you guys. It's what we allow ourselves to accept. That we allow ourselves to be other people's employees. We allow ourselves to live based off of a paycheck. We allow our emotions to be based off of a paycheck, right? How many of you guys have been like, oh, I'm feeling really good because I just got paid, but oh, I just spent it all and now I'm really sad because I have no more money left, you know? How many times have we done that, allowed money to control our emotions rather than our emotions controlling our money is where I'm really getting from that. Um, and so I just really like that. I thought that was really cool to think like, um, so I wrote down a few things. So I'll just kind of go over like what I wrote down. The first one I wrote is like poverty is taught. Like that makes so much sense of like how many times like do we think about money like our parents thought about money. Um, I had to like unlearn the way my dad thought about money. <laughs> um, I love that he was an entrepreneur and he was like a poster and I got that kind of like gruff from him. But my dad was happy when he had money and angry when he didn't. You know, you knew when dad was doing good. 
you knew when dad was doing bad. Like there was a clear distinction between whether my dad was doing good in business or whether my dad was doing bad. And me as a child knew that, you know, like I knew when my dad was doing well and I knew when my dad was not doing well. And I think that's interesting that I, as a child knew that, you know, based off of his mood, not because he was buying me things. I didn't really pay attention to that. But my dad was a different person when he was doing well, going to work, coming home, earning money. He was like, hallelujah, I'm the best dad. And then, but there were times where he was struggling and he would come home and he would take it out on us or we would hear about it or, you know what I mean? And it was like, wow, I instantly learned in my youth, money controls your emotions. When money's good, you're good. When money's bad, you're bad. And I learned that from him, you know, and I don't even blame him because I know he learned that from, um, you know, the generation before that. And so we never really thought to stop and say, maybe this isn't the best way to do this, you know, because we just do what we're taught and what we learn from down the ladder. And I think it takes something like this sometimes to kind of be like, oh, what I'm doing might be wrong. It's okay. It's okay. But I need to make some major changes. People shouldn't be able to tell in my mood whether I have money in the bank account or not. You know, because I feel rich in life. Like, can we just be rich in life rather than rich in our bank accounts? Because that's what should control our mood, you know? Um, yes, of course, money makes the world go round. You can use all those kinds of things and money is important. And I know we have to feed our kids and all that kind of set, stuff. But do you want your kids to know when you have money in your bank account or not? Probably not. Right. I don't want Derek to know when we're struggling. I don't want Derek to know that, hey, you know, uh, I can't get groceries till Thursday because I don't get paid. You got to eat this until then. You know, I'll be like, hey, we're baking. It's a uh, leftovers day. You know, <laughs> like you can totally control that. You know, it's your um, mindset about money that will either make or ruin your yeah. your life or your experiences oh. right like how many times have you guys gone and done something and you've been like oh my god this would have been so much better if we could have gotten that place or if we could have went and done this when we were there you know we ruin it almost we ruin it because we're like oh well, we did this but we could have been doing this instead and we ruin it almost what is happening because we're thinking of what could be happening instead and i just think that is interesting of how much our minds can ruin stuff for us. It's, it's sad to be honest. Like it's sad that we could single handedly ruin experiences that we're having because of our own thoughts about it. Like that just breaks my heart, you know, that we could ruin a vacation because we're not spending what we thought we should have on it or, you know, or, you're so worried on vacation about getting back home to work and your bills and to all this other stuff that you are ruining the vacation that's happening, you know, right in front of you because you're so worried about all the stuff still happening at home. Um, and so I just think that we need to, it, 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 it is interesting because this video, even though I thought it wasn't going to really resonate with what we were talking about, so it's like, that's oh, about money. It's going to be completely different. Notice he still talked about your mindset. The thing that we've been talking about all this time. You want to lose that weight? Well, you got to get your mind right first. You want to quit that job? Well, you're going to have to get your mind right first. You know, we've been talking about that. And so it's funny to have this situation come up where we're like, oh, let's talk about money. And he's like, you got to get your mind right first. And I'm like, damn it. It's the same as everything else. <laughs> but then it also shows you how important it is, you guys. It's in everything. Everything you do or don't do is because of what you think about up here, right? Like whether you have money in the bank account or not is probably determined on how you think about money, how you 
spend money, how you um, visualize, like, does money mean power? Does money mean happiness? You know, that will determine whether you probably have money in your bank account or not right now, which is interesting, right? Like, I'm being exposed to this just as much as you guys are. So it's like just as turmoil-y as me, for me, as it is for you guys. If you guys are like, holy shit, I didn't realize that money was about my mindset. Um, I did not. I did not realize that money was about my mindset. Um, and so I'm kind of like trying to figure out how to process that as well. If you guys are struggling a little bit on how to process that. Um, it's interesting, but I see it in the way he explains it when he uses examples of when you get a paycheck, you're an employee. Now you're instantly working for somebody else and you're under their control, right? And for some people, that's fine. That's what they want. They're good. They're comfortable, right? Um, but I wouldn't say that they're extraordinary you know, I wouldn't say they live a fulfilled, amazing life. They probably live an okay life. They're probably happy majority of the time, you know, but for me, I'm going for like extraordinary, you know, like I want to live an extraordinary life. I don't know 100% all of how I'm going to get there or what it's going to do, but I know that like ordinary is, is unacceptable for me surviving is unacceptable for me thriving and extraordinary are more words that i would like to use when i talk about my own life and i know that in order to be able to do that though i'm gonna have to change my mindset probably about a few things money is probably going to be one of them um it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle i think um but I, i'm really interested in it because I know that it's one of the things that holds my family back from doing everything that we want to do. I know, and, and not even in a way of like, you know, like we still pretty much find ways to do the things that we want to do, but there are still things that it's like, oh, we can't go just buy a boat right now and live on it because of our finances are holding us back. So how can I fix that finances to where I can just go do the things that I want to do? I think it has to start up here first. I think it has to start with my mindset first on what I think it's gonna take to maybe get that house boat. Maybe I need to start working on my mindset of like, oh, when I get that paycheck, instead of doing that instant gratification and purchasing something, I need to put that back in savings. It's the mindset, you guys. And it's funny of like, once we realize our mindset affects the way we either emotionally eat or lose weight or things like that. Like even almost the surface stuff with that, you start to learn in beach body, um, the real little stuff of like, Oh, my mindset will determine whether I pick a, a cupcake or a carrot, you know, like you realize these little small things and you're like, Oh, I've got so much power over my brain and my mindset. That's the beginning. That's like literally, the beginning of understanding how powerful your brain is. And once you realize, oh, I can choose a carrot over the cookie, cool. Now I'll choose this over this. And you kind of keep doing that, right? And you're losing weight, it's feeling good. Well, imagine if you did that in other areas of your life as well. Imagine if you realize how powerful your brain is and you could start changing the way your finances look or the way your relationships look, or the way your business runs. Like that, yeah. I just wanted to put, um, you were talking about how you're being raised and everybody's raised differently with finances and money. So I was raised very blessed. Um, my, my family had money, we built a house, we lived on a farm, we had horses. So, and I was the youngest child. So obviously I got everything I wanted. I mean, looking back, like it's crazy. Cause I had to get to a point in my life to tell my dad, like, stop giving me money. Like I had to say that to him. And then of course, you know, month down the road, I'm like, why did I do that? 
but um, that's the lifestyle I had. Now I'm trying, I'm, I think as an adult now, I've definitely um, recognized that and I've learned from it. But then my husband, he grew up um, not poor. I wouldn't say poor, but he, he didn't have the wealthy. He didn't, he would have Christmas where he would get Christmas presents. And then a week later, his mom would take him back and get money back. Like he grew up uh, with foster kids in and out of his house. He grew up with a different home every other month. Like, um, and they weren't poor, but they just didn't live smart. They didn't have the right mindset with their money. They had good jobs. So it's hard for me. Um, my husband and I are a great puzzle piece, but like when we go on vacation, like I know in my mind, like I have to put money back for that vacation and I have to make sure our, pills, our bills are up to date because if he wants to overspend on that vacation so the kids can have fun or the kids want something, then I know that's gonna happen because he was never able to do that. And then like at Christmas time, I know that I have to have a bank account for Christmas because he'll go overboard. But I have to step back and I have to have a mindset like this is how he was raised. This is where he's coming from. He wants his kids to have what he didn't have. But then I'm over here, the kids don't need everything. Like they don't need all this stuff. So it's a happy medium, but it's also a mindset of where he came from with his finances and how we work together to be successful with our money. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. That that was cool. I um, think uh, Mike and I are, are very similar to you and Dwayne then. <laughs> um, Mike, Mike, like when he, I first met him, when he would get money, he would just like spend it instantly. I mean, it was just like that money had to get so freaking fast out of his hands because he just didn't know what to do with it. You know, like when I first met him, I mean, he just would literally like, he would just get money and it would just instantly be blown, you know, on just stuff that you, we don't even have to get, you know? Um, and it, and it really comes from, you know, his mom, I mean, his mom was, you know, she'd get money and blow it and. I mean, they lived in a freaking back of a U-Haul for like months, sitting in, in a, they lived like in a U-Haul. They would used to like pull up and have an extension cord to like a place where they would like steal electricity and stuff. And like, like just money was never a commodity in his life. Um, I would definitely say that I was, when I was younger, like we had, we had a cabin up at the lake. We had jet skis. Like I was the youngest, but I was always kind of like, <laughs> like I always kind of got everything like I mean it was always a really determining factor of whether like like I always knew when I could ask or could not ask um and actually that brings up a funny story so when I was like so when I was 18 um I was a senior in high school and I got invited to go to Hawaii my mom will remember this I know she's not I don't know if she's listening or not but um so I got invited to go to Hawaii for this volleyball tournament I got picked to be on this team and we were going to go and travel around Hawaii. And it was going to be this like tournament for like seven days or it was supposed to be five days, but the trip was supposed to be seven. So you do like kind of like excursion stuff while you're there. And, <clears throat> but it was going to cost money obviously to go and be part of the team and go on the event. And so I had talked to my mom and I was like, mom, I know we don't have the money, but maybe I can like ask people to sponsor me. So my mom and I, we printed up, all of these letters, we were stuffed in envelopes. We were going to send them to everybody I knew and see if anybody wanted to like sponsor me or anything like that. While I'm stuffing the envelopes, my dad comes in and he goes, what are you guys doing? You know? So we explain to him, we tell him the whole thing. We're, I'm so excited, right? Like I am just like, I, I can, I just remember the feeling of how, um, cool it felt to be invited. And then I was actually working my butt off to go. And my dad told me, we can't afford that. You can't go to that. And I was just like, what? I was like, but I'm going to raise my own money to go. And 
And literally he was just like, no, you can't go because we can't afford it. And like, that was it. Like I never went, I didn't go. I wasn't allowed to go. Just cause like my dad just said, no, we weren't allowed to, like I wasn't even allowed to like figure it out. And I remember being just like, honestly, my 31 year old self, I could feel the anxiety like building again because I'm so, I was so frustrated. I was so mad because I didn't understand. I didn't understand why can't I go if I raise my own money, if I figure, cause like, I think in his mind, it was still spending money on something that wasn't bringing in money to the house, you know? And even though it wasn't his money, it was still me spending money on something that he couldn't do. He couldn't just go off to Hawaii, you know? And so I think it was easier for him to shut it down to not even have to watch it happen almost. Maybe it was like a jealousy thing. Maybe he was jealous. He couldn't even go. I, I don't know, you know, at this point, but it's like, it's so interesting of his perspective on money at the time, like affected me in such a huge way, you know? And like, to, like where I still, I actually still resent Hawaii in my life. <laughs> Cause I'm like, Oh, like I can't decide if I ever want to go there or not go there. <laughs> because of it. I really uh, think, Hey Jen, I yeah. really think his thinking was, um, the thought of you asking other people for money made it look like he couldn't afford it. Oh, I would have never and thought that. The perspective of what other people would think yeah. about him. Oh, I'm really glad you said that. Yeah. Interesting. I would have never uh, even like put my brain there, you know? Yeah that makes sense because then it's like a pride issue right it's right. like you know, of like i don't want to look like i can't afford to send my daughter here so other people aren't going to send my daughter either right i'd rather shut it down than look like i can't afford to send my own daughter oh interesting <laughs> <laughs> and you know what it was so crazy though because i remember um, and this is another even just money factor of like, I remember that next week he had bought. So my dad like sold and traded like vehicles every once in a while. Like he would buy them up, fix them a little bit and trade them and sell them. Cause he had a friend that did it. Um, and he had bought a van. I remember a very specific brown, one of those big ass brown vans, you know, with like the high top ceilings. He bought it for the exact price that my trip was. He bought it. It was like $2,100. And I remember being like, wait, you just, you just spent the amount. And I remember having a conversation. I was like, you spent the amount that my trip was. And his reason was, yeah, but this makes money. I can flip that and make money. Isn't that interesting? I get it. But as a 18 year old daughter, I was so livid. Like I was so angry because I didn't understand it really. Like I didn't understand that our family maybe really needed that money. And that was the only way that my dad got an extra 500 bucks in our pockets, you know, was to flip that van at the time or something. And it's just so interesting to like look back on it though. But I was so angry as an 18 year old being like, wait, you just bought, you know? And so it's interesting even to hear my mom's perspective on that is like, you know, it's, it's interesting how much even our pride can get in the way, you know? Um, and you also have to remember, um, his broke and my broke were two different things. If he was under $2,000 in the bank account, he was broke. He was like, I can't believe how I, I've been working my ass off and I have no money. I'm like, I have $5 in the bank. Yeah. <laughs> you have 2,000. Uh, let's see who's more broke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like such a different, so different. Um, yeah, my dad was a funny character. It's interesting to talk about him because he's not here, you know, to like defend himself. But um, <laughs> it's cool to dissect those past experiences, you guys. Like once you've kind of, I, once I've moved out of my 18 year old self little mindset and like I'm trying to like grow and learn, I can really learn a lot from the way my dad acted or didn't act about money. 
you know, there's so much that you can learn based off of other people's. Oh my gosh. Is that Amanda? Who's that a picture of? Is that my dad? <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's your mom. I recognize your mom for sure. She's holding Johnny and that's Uncle Bert. That's her holding Uncle Johnny and that's my mom. Oh my gosh. That's actually on my fridge or it was on my fridge. Oh, that's crazy. He looks so funny. He looks like a little punk. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He, was. <laughs> he used to always tell me if I met him back then that I would not have married him. He was terrible, he said. Always said. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that's funny. Oh goodness, you guys. I think that we could really learn a lot. Um just from analyzing the way that we grew up. And, and, and instead of saying, oh, this is just how I am. This is just how I've been raised. This is just how life is. If we actually just stop and say, okay, maybe I was raised this way. Was that exactly the right way? Not saying, you know, that my dad like did wrong things. Like I'm telling you guys, we had, a, we really did. We had a, we had a great life. Mom, I love you. We had a great life. Like we did amazing things, but how much more amazing could they have possibly been if we had the right mindset, you know, or how can I make my own son's life even more amazing by recognizing those patterns and changing them by saying, you know what, those patterns existed in my family or in my life, but they're going to stop with me. And my son is going to live something different. My son is not going to know when my bank account is flourished or diminished. He just knows mom's mom. You know, not, oh, mom must be doing good and work. She's all happy and dancing around the house. Oh, mom must be doing bad. She's laying in bed with the covers over her head at nine, nine in the morning, you know. Um, we have to try to not let our highs be too high and not let our lows be too low. You know, find that mediocre mindset that will allow you to be open to the good, be open to the bad. Um, if you're failing, you're learning, right? That's what I, I love about that. Like, I love the fact that if you're failing, you're doing something right in a sense, because you're gonna learn really quickly whether you're doing something good or bad, you know? You're gonna know real quick. Whoops, that was the wrong thing. And talking about finances with your spouse. That oh. is the hardest thing to do, but I'm telling you, because you guys are all raised different, being able to talk to them and knowing where they're coming from, you know, like Tennille knows that how her husband was raised, it makes a difference when you talk about finances, you know, like here's what we got to do, here's our goal, I mean, get that vision board up there. <laughs> Well, and, and you kind of understand them a little bit better. Like I, when I first met Mike and he would just like blow money, I was just like, who are you? Like, what world do you come from that you just do that? Like, I was just like, what is happening? I can't do this. Like, I was like, I can't be with you. And he'd be like, no, no, no. You know, it'd be like, I was just like, I, this is too much stress. And, um, but as I learned where he came from, and the more and more about the background that he has and the houses and households and people that influenced him, I'm like, oh, no wonder you spend money like that. You know, no wonder. And I don't blame you because that's all you've ever known, you know? And so the more I understand him and same with me, the more he understands me of like, my mom worked at a bank. Our kid, like 16 bank accounts. I got a bank account since I was 16, you know? I was like, I've been, I had my own credit card at 16 because my mom worked at the bank. You know what I mean? Like it was just, so we just come from polar opposite worlds, especially when it comes to money. Money for sure um, is like the dividing factor between Mike and I. Like you can really tell where we come from based on how we think about money. Before Mike and I couldn't even have a conversation about money unless it escalated and got into an argument every time. All we used to do was, I mean, we, we worked all week just to party. And that was our mindset though. Like when Mike and I met, like, that's all we did. Like I worked at Penn station. We both came from families that didn't have money. There was always drugs and alcohol. And it was just like, that's 
why we were like, okay, cool. You're like a big brother. Let's do this. We partied. That's all we did. We worked every single day just so we could live for that party because that was what made us happy then. I mean, and that was, you know, that's all we did was, I mean, it was living in the moment at that age range and what our mindset was, was just the, that party. So it was just, yeah, we just blew it. Who cared? It was going to come again after we made it. And we didn't have anything else to spin it on. We didn't have goals, aspirations, dreams. It was like, cool. how are we going to get to her up today? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, buy that big fifth spot. Buy the Jack Daniels. <laughs> Who's got the Costco card? Who's got the Costco card? <laughs> it was. And, and I can't even blame him because it's like, I still look at his mom like, oh my God, you're still doing that, <laughs> you know? Like, and, and it, it exposes a lot, you know? Like, it kind of makes you giggle because you're like, wow, like, how, like, what were we thinking? But you didn't know to think any different, you know? You really didn't until something like this happens and you're exposed to, oh, maybe I was doing that wrong or, oh, I could learn a lot from how I used to be. You know, you have these moments or these life experiences that kind of bring you around to say, oh, that, that wasn't exactly the best way, you know? Um, how can I change that now? You know, I think that there's like this, um, I'm always one of those people that like, once I know something, I can't unknow it. You know, um, once it's in my brain, I literally will fester on something until I either fix it or like it has to change. Once I'm like, once I even knew what meat does to my body, like when I started like doing research on like animal proteins and stuff like that, I like, it's really hard. I, it's hard for me to eat red meat at all. Like I just can't anymore because I know in my brain now what it does to my body. And I just like, I can't bring myself to do it. So it's like, once it's in my brain, I'm one of those people that it's just like a switch is flipped. Um, and so this like money aspect, I, I actually just downloaded the Gordon Ramsay. Um, oh, what's it called? I don't know. I didn't know my audio books. It's, um, let me see what it's called. <laughs> Um, my library. I just downloaded it. Okay, it's called the Total Money Makeover. Total Money Makeover. I haven't listened to it yet, but I just downloaded it on audiobook, and it's Dave Ramsey, and he does a crap ton of stuff. I've heard really great things from him or about him from other people, but I haven't. I think um, honestly, I. I've been avoiding um, getting my fan finances in check. I don't know if anybody else does that. Like, I, I've been avoiding it like somebody avoids losing 10 pounds. You know, they keep saying it, they keep saying it. And then you see them a year later and you're like, wow, that 10 pounds is still right there, huh? You know, I'm literally that with like my finances. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to get these right. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get a savings. And then I just don't. Um, so I'm really trying to put it out there, start talking about it a little bit. So then I feel a little bit more accountable as well. Like even just saying it to you guys. Now I'm like, all right, well now I got to really kind of start reading that because um, I told you guys, you know, uh, which accountability can bring so much. Like it can be hard, you guys. Um, when you first start getting accountability, it can be really scary. And it can make you kind of want to like run and hide and be like, oh, these girls now know that I was working on finances. And now that I'm not working on my finances, I feel like I need to crawl into a hole. That's not what I want from you guys here. We're talking about this stuff because I know that it takes a long time to work through it. Okay. So just because you maybe know something or you're working through something doesn't mean you have to just flip a switch and fix it. It's going to take time sometimes. Sometimes you're going to think you got it. And then something might happen and all of a sudden you're like, <sighs> you might kind of fall back and you're going to have to bring it back or find a different way to bring it back. Um, but I'm definitely interested in getting my mindset right about money and getting my mindset right about what it means to be poor or rich in life, not just in my bank account. You know, um, I want people to almost think I'm rich, but just because of how happy I am. Not because the new car I got is a brand new 2020 Beamer. I, I don't need people to think I'm rich 
in my bank account want people to think I'm rich in life. And I think that the only way I'm going to be rich in life is if I change my aspect and my mindset about money, you know, um, and think that I don't have to have a million dollars in the bank account to feel rich. So I think it, it's interesting and I'm like working through it myself. And so I'm just going to start sharing it with you guys as I continue working through it. Um, and hopefully as I start listening to this Dave Ramsey thing, like maybe I could pull out some stuff too and like play you guys segments or something like that. Um, and maybe we could just start working through it and start working on that part of our mindset too. It's interesting. It's like the moment you get so far in something, you just discover something else that you can start working on. So it's like, even if some people are like, oh my God, like I could never have a mindset like you and you're so motivated. You, I'm like, man, I got so much work to do. <laughs> you know, some people look at me like, wow, she's so far in her mindset or how is she doing, you know, things like that. And I'm thinking, wow, I still have so far to go. I still have so much to do, you know, because once you expose yourself to a certain layer or a certain level of information, then you're like, oh, well, now that I know this, probably need to start working on this and this and this and this and it just starts opening up larger and larger and you realize once you start learning how much you really have to learn and um that can be scary but it can also be empowering as well um so it could be a little fearful when you first get into it of like ooh, you know that's like that's a lot to do like ooh, like you know if somebody opens up their first program and they go, oh my God, I got to do all this nutrition. And what are these recipes and these containers and these workouts? It can feel very overwhelming, right? But you do your first 21 day fix program and all of a sudden you're looking for 21 day fix extreme. And then you do 21 day fix extreme and you're like, ooh, what's this 80 day obsession? You do 80 day obsession and you're like, ooh, what's this morning about now 100? And it just keeps going because once you realize you're capable of doing this, you're like, ooh, maybe I'll try this. Ooh. Maybe I could do this. Wow, if I could do this, then I could obviously do this. And you start to expand and grow and realize that you're capable of so much more than you ever thought possible. So I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm like, uh, finances are my next spot. That's my next goal is finances. Like getting that shit under control, getting that stuff to where Mike and I can have a whole conversation about money and it doesn't escalate into an argument. That's like a goal of mine. You know, we've gotten so much better over the years. Um, it's helped when I just created a calendar and put it on the wall and I don't really talk about it. It's there. I know he sees it. He knows what's coming up on Thursday that we need to pay or whatever. I'm like, it's on the wall. <laughs> like, I don't need to sit there and go, don't forget we have electric. Don't forget we have, we have to make that payment to Beachbody. Don't forget. Don't forget. I just say, hey, we got bills coming up this week. It's on the wall. It's your responsibility to go over and look at it too, you know? Um, and that kind of took a little bit of the initial argument out because it was like, a lot of times we would be having conversations where it was like, what's due, this is due. And then two days later when we actually got paid, he was like, what was that again? Oh yeah, this is it again. So we're having multiple conversations about the same bills just because we didn't, we weren't on the same, looking at the same thing. So as soon as I put it up on the board, we don't really sit and discuss it several times a day. It's just up there for you to look at whenever you want to know. So that was kind of nice. Um, at first though, I think Mike didn't like it because our bills were like in his face constantly. When you walk in the kitchen, it was like, boom, we couldn't help but look at it. You know, it's right there. Um, so it took us a little bit of time to even get used to, or there'd be like times where I would just sit and stare at it. And he'd be like, is it going to change? And I'm like, no. I'm just staring at it, reading it. <laughs> and like, it was like almost like where he was like avoiding it, but I was watching it so much. Like, like, you know what I mean? So we had to kind of come to terms of like, I needed to chill out, but he needed to take it more seriously. And then we met on a level of where um, we found like a common ground, but it's taken years to figure out at least how can we talk about our weekly bills, monthly bills without it being an argument, you know? Um, and I'm sure everybody's different. Like maybe you guys don't talk about argument, you know, maybe you guys don't argue when you talk about finances with your husband, which I'm jealous of, but no, <laughs> um, but maybe you have other areas that you guys argue with, or maybe you guys hate how someone spends money on certain things. You just never know like little things that could, um, be fixed, 
that don't have to stay like that. You don't have to continue not knowing. You don't have to continue arguing. Keep working through it. Find another way. Be willing to change yourself. I think that's the biggest thing. As I know in the beginning, I was always like, Mike's bad with money. It was Mike's problem. It was Mike's fault that money wasn't working right because of the way he spent it. Not me. Couldn't have been me. Oh my gosh. Hell no. I was too perfect. Right. Um, but the way I would bring it up to Mike was wrong. I used to, guys, I remember this one time I met him in the driveway <laughs> because there was a charge on my card and he like came home and I was like, I like met him in the driveway, like his mom. And I was like, did you use my card while you were out? And he was like, I just got out of the car. And I was like, well, there's a charge on my card and I know I didn't do it. And like, and like, I like met him like his, I'm like, why would I think that he was going to talk to me and say, yeah, it was me. I went to the gas station and spent some stuff. Like, because I met him like his mom at his, the car door, like, did you do that? And I like scolded him, like, better not, you know, when in reality, he could have came inside and said, Hey, did you, guys, did you use my card for that? I just noticed that there was a charge that I didn't do. I just want to make sure it was you and not somebody else. And he could have been like, yeah, it was me. I went to the gas station. I've been like, okay, cool. You know what I mean? Like that conversation could have happened so differently had I done it differently. Now, in my mind, he was wrong. He spent money and didn't say anything. And now I'm sitting here having to meet him in the driveway. That's how I looked at it. It was like all him, right? It was his problem as to why I had to go out there and meet him like that. That's how I looked at it then. He did it wrong. He was wrong. But I was wrong too, you guys. I should have never addressed it like that. What what kind of reaction did I think I was going to get? You know? You've come to clean. Well, you better get clean in then. <laughs> I do need cleaning. Thank you. Um, a few rooms at my house, Derek. <laughs> I'll send them over. <laughs> wow, you're good. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I'm cleaning this for you can, so you can be shiny. So it's shiny? Oh, it looks great. It is really shiny. <laughs> so I think um, that was an interesting kind of information for today. Just something different, something to kind of get our wheels turning in a different direction, you know? And something that I really know for myself, I definitely need to work on. Um, I have been working on it, but I think it's time to just kind of bring it to the forefront and like really buckle down and get it under control. And because I've got goals and dreams, right. That I want to start focusing on and I need money to do those things. And I'm tired of money stopping me from doing those things. I'm tired of my excuses to why we haven't achieved five of the 10 dreams on our list is because of money. Like if I had money, I could easily complete half of my dream list right now. Like that, you know, like maybe we need to just start thinking of that. It's like, man, our, is money really holding me back from doing all these things that I want to do and why? And how can I change it? Stop living in it. Stop staying in it. Stop using it as this is a, I love that. Like he said, it, um, poor, poor is an escape saying we don't have money for that rather than how can I get money for that is an escape. I love that because I've realized now what it is when somebody says, Oh, we don't have money for that. It's that they don't want to put in the effort to get the money to get it, you know? And so poor is a mindset and poor is an escape. Don't be afraid of the work because the work, is what's going to bring you rich in life. I like that. Let me check. Hey, so, I like that. I also like that he talked about real teachers, like real teachers, like like people that teach you things in life, like life um, lessons. You know, like real teachers. Not that like teachers in our schools aren't teaching us things, but how can we get life teachers in our lives? 
um, I think that could be very important. And I thought that was really interesting. So I might actually even post that video over into the challenge group. Just maybe someone else will watch it. But well, I guess I recorded this. So I'll post this in there and then they can hear us talk about it too. What am I thinking? I actually remembered to record. So <laughs> exciting. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pop over to just the chat here because um, I didn't get a chance to like really read these. So um, yeah, I love that I can't afford it. How can I afford it? I think that like, it was like this, it's funny sometimes when you're watching these videos and like little light bulbs go off and you're like, oh, <laughs> literally flipping two words can change a whole meaning to somebody of something like this. And it's so interesting. I love that entrepreneurs work for free because I felt like semi, that's kind of like, I'm like, man, I do a lot of coaching for free. Like warrior hour does not pay me, right? Like I don't get paid after I press end meeting. Um, to me, I'm still working though. I'm being an entrepreneur. I am still finding a way to live in my passion and my dream and, and it, but I'm not getting paid for being here. You know, um, so I was like, well, maybe that was in the right. That's, that's got to be a move in the right direction, right? <laughs> um, okay, so let me read Carly. It's just when you think the stuff we usually talk about it is talk about. Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. I was like, I don't know why I thought money was important. I just kind of like went off to money, and I was like, this is gonna be really random. They're probably gonna be like, why is she playing this? But then it really, I think it worked out that it was like still so in line with everything that we're talking about um because as we're getting a hold of our mindsets for everything else in life why not add this into because i think this is something that we forget easily like we're so trying to figure out how to get motivated how to stay healthy how to keep my family going but you guys i think the finances are like the underlying like like it's almost like the heat to your pot for your fire of all the stuff that you want to put in it. Like, yeah, you want to build this, or you want to like make this soup and you have all these vegetables and this broth and this chicken and this big old pot and you're going to make it, but you got no fire. Right. I think almost like the finances are like the fire that's going to heat everything so we can feed our families and enjoy the soup. Like we got to have that fire though. If that made sense. <laughs> That's kind of how I visualize that. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, dude, money, money can bring such anxiety. It's so interesting of just how much anxiety money can bring to some people and not other people too. Isn't that interesting? Like I didn't realize like Mike, it brings money, bills bring such anxiety to Mike. And I'm like, what? We're just talking about our water bill you know and but it just instantly does because he had never really had money originally too to pay that kind of stuff and so you know he just knows to kind of ignore or block it out so we don't have to think about it you know because that's what he learned um so kind of interesting definitely a good little combo today i really enjoyed that i appreciate you guys um kind of humoring me in that little talk but i think it was interesting i think actually it was really cool and I'm really um my wheels are spinning I feel like about money now <laughs> I'm also one of those people like once I get started on something I am like kind of obsessed <laughs> I'm just like yeah I'm like all in I'm like oh my gosh now that I now that it's like been brought to my attention and it kind of sparked a little um motivation in me now I'm gonna be like doo -doo -doo -doo, let's put this here and this here driven yeah driven exactly all right, ladies, I am going to let you go on that note. Oh, wait, Mike said he wanted to say something to you guys, but I didn't know if he knew that it was just like a couple of you guys. I don't know what he wanted to say. Just stay right there for me for like two seconds. Hey, Mike. All right, he's rocking out the dishes. So he said, um, if you guys aren't friends with him, maybe you could friend request him or um, he's gonna go live later and he was gonna talk about, he's like, I was gonna talk about it here. He goes, but I'm just gonna go live later on his own page. Um, and so what I can do is also share it so that if you guys aren't friends what with time? him. Um, I don't know, he'll probably go live. I, 
I see him building momentum in there. So I'm assuming he'll go live in about 30 minutes to an hour. I can feel his energy in there, like building as he's like cleaning. It's like he's mentally boosting himself. It takes time. <laughs> oh, no. you gotta come down. Hi, Mike. Hey. No, um, I'm gonna okay. ruffle some feathers today. Um, there's gonna be some guys pretty pissed off at me. Um, but I'm just kind of a, like, over the years, um, I've gathered throughout my own information, not from what Jenny um, has been saying to me or anything like that, um, but the lack of uh, support uh, oh, yes, from, from our spouses. Right. Yeah, we had a um, huge conversation about men and how spouse, shitty they are. Spouse so, support. I'm calling dudes out today, and I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding. Truthfully, I don't get it. Um, I might not have been doing uh, every program with Jenny from the get-go. Um, it did start out with finances, and I know how guys run. And uh, guys are really financially driven, which is the dumbest thing in the world. And once we get over that, like, our boundaries become really crazy. Um, and I know that I remember saying to myself, because I was the one going to work, but I made a, an agreement with Jenny. I will give you X amount of years to build your dream. I'm going to do everything. I'm going to carry this on my back. And I've done it. Um, I've had some hard times. It's been pretty stressful. Um, but all in all, seeing what she does for you guys is amazing. That's why I did it. But in the beginning, it was like, shit, girl. <laughs> like, we are spending six, $700 a month in doing this for you to do this program. I love you. But I could donate this money to some homeless guy. Like, we are spending money. Like, holy shit. And like, the money wasn't coming back in, but the bills were still there. But I was still supportive. I was never, ever, ever, ever was I like, you can't do this. Like that, for one. Not because of who my wife is, but like, in general, who the fuck are you to tell a girl, a woman, another person what they're allowed to do? If that makes them happy, you should become the number one fan. And over the years, I've had problems with this had problems with finding out that girls couldn't go to Summit because their husband said no. Well, you better shape up or ship out. Straight up. And that's what I'm going to tell these guys because we need to really remember what we hold every day. Every day we need to, to, to support our women and our families and everyone in it like it was the first day we met them. The first time I took out trash for Jenny is the same way I take out trash every day. With excitement. With making her day a little bit easier because isn't that what we're here for making everyone's day a little bit easier i'm gonna go on i'm going on for a full 60 minutes and these dudes are gonna get shitty and that's good i want them to get mad um they're not gonna be tougher than me for one like literally, verbally physically that's mentally it's not gonna happen but if they are getting mad it's a reflection of who they're looking at and the problems that they got going on and maybe it's little but a small little thing could could literally change everyone. I went on this morning and said, hey, guys, you know, everyone's day off is a little different. My day off is I'm not going to the job site, but I'm going to go to my house and I'm going to make my Sunday the easiest for my wife. That's what I do. I'm not special. These are just things that everyone should be doing because behind your back, your wife is doing all of this shit every day, all day to make you happy. So the least we could do the least give a hundred percent back what so get your husbands on there i don't want to start a fight on a sunday but i'm telling you like don't have <laughs> don't have <laughs> yes you do <laughs> no, like i'm just gonna expose some stuff and because it to me i don't i don't grasp it okay i don't get it why this people are wired this way that 75 percent of the men in this group if you guys left them, they wouldn't know what to do. They wouldn't know how to wipe their own ass, and that's sad. I remember, I'm trying to motivate guys, so I'm not trying to hurt their feelings. I'm trying to expose something that I can help. I can help this, because I do this on a daily. It's got, if, it, if she left right now, I would emotionally be scarred, but I would get through my day. I'm going to be able to do the laundry, the dishes, the things that this stereotypical bullshit that's out there that a woman is supposed to just have to do or she's right here. I have, I do all the laundry, every bit of it. I sometimes do it at job sites where I'm doing a remodel and I'll be like, Hey, while I'm here, can I do laundry? And I will fold and do laundry 
for my family because it makes things easier while I'm busting my ass in the, at the job site. Just, and I'm sitting at home. She's at home, but she's pursuing her dream, helping people. It's the littlest things, but 99.9% .9 of the guys are like, well, I don't even know how to fold a sheet. Why? What are you going to do? Okay. Worst case scenario, and I hate even putting this out there, and you guys see me building up right now. What if your wife left? You owe it to your kids to be able to take her place. If you can't even do the littlest things right now for your wife, what are you going to do if she leaves? What if terminal illness happens? What if life happens and your wife gets into an accident tomorrow and dies? What are you going to do for your kids and yourself? Are you going to be able to take care of yourself? Or are you going to sit there and let that situation ruin you? Because the guy that can't do anything, he's probably going to commit spiritual suicide over the next 10 years. And you're going to see him become a drunk, homeless, because he just didn't know how to take care of his wife and support his wife. That's where it starts. Supporting her is supporting yourself. Simple as that. I was raised by a woman who told me, you need to do these things. Now, little did I know that when I did this, I learned how to do laundry, that my house always smelled good. Kristen, anyone who's ever been to my house, my house was always welcoming. As a single man, my house was welcoming, clean. I was very, very nice to everyone. But just because I always knew that I needed to be ready within five minutes, keep clean. I do the same here. I do a lot around here. But she does more. The shit that I don't want to do. We have, <laughs> we have an agreement. We have an agreement. I'm not a stay-at-home dad. Simple as that. I'm not. I'm a guy that has to get out. I've got to get out and do things. I've got to build stuff. I've got to blow shit up. I've got to beat things down. I thank her for everything she does by the little things I do. So... We're going to get some guys. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to grind their gears today, ladies. Um, so expect, hopefully, a little feedback. If your husband, your boyfriend, your spouse isn't in my group or a friend, I'm opening up my doors. Bring it in. If you guys want a friend request so you can watch it and share it, go right ahead. Just keep it at that. I'm on my live videos. Get your husbands to check them out. I'm trying to motivate guys into being better guys. I'm finding out that I'm a pretty good guy. That's it. That's all I'm figuring out is I'm a pretty good guy and I'm sharing a little bit of information. <laughs> I thought this was just every, I literally thought this was just everyday stuff. Ladies, I thought, look, below the scenes, I'm drying dishes. Yeah. I swear to God. Yeah. I'm, you go in there, the, the, the toilets are done. Because she was just in here helping you guys that is then spreading. So why not? It's Sunday. I'm bored. I don't want to just lay around. I told those guys, don't just lay around. You're really, if you slack on Sunday, taking that rest day off, and you don't get your blood flowing, you're going to cause an avalanche into the rest of the week. Mondays are going to suck. I am ready for Monday, halfway through Sunday. That's all it is. I'm going to pump these dudes up. I'm out of here. I can talk forever. <laughs> I got that daddy juice. <laughs> oh. Ladies, be easy. Just so you know, that's mama's go-go juice. <sighs> No. <laughs> I see why y'all are together. Totally. Y'all are like perfect. We have uh, a lot of energy in this household at all times. Just, just between Mike and I. Like we are always like the house is always cruising. Man. Always on. Mm -hmm. We can't even really sit down. We actually sat down last night and watched a film or not a family movie. We very fell asleep and Mike and I watched a whole movie last night for the first time in, I couldn't tell you how long. I mean, we're totally one of those people, we'll put a movie on and then we'll get up and walk away and start doing something. So like for us to actually sit last night, I had to turn my phone off, I put it on the charger, like didn't even have it. It was really the only way I could probably like really focus. Um, but yeah, we're, we're usually cruising around this house, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's, um, oh, you're back. Oh, really cool. <laughs> no, I got, I forgot to say I have those tongs. Helping everyone, helping these guys do these little things, I think at home and at work and with friends, it all is going to lead back to fitness. That's all what it leads back to. If you're a happy, if you're living a, a healthy life, you're living a happier life. It's as simple as that. Like, I fought it. I brought back tacos. I, I always fought on me having uh, muscles since I was a kid. And little did I know that even just 
the, the grind of getting up every day, doing the workouts, um, it's changed everything. So if I could, it's all full circle with these guys. All I'm really doing is putting up the bait, get their attention, ruffle their feathers a little bit to where that I can reel them in, sign them up, and get them working out with us, ladies. I'm on your team. <laughs> I'm trying to get your men in here working out with me. I do. I need a, I, I, we need a squad Suckers. of dudes. <laughs> uh, I need support. I need people to make me accountable um, as well. And I think Dwayne might be my number one guy. <laughs> is in the background. Is, is he doing work? Is he mooning me? I'm not sure. Smoke a cigarette. <laughs> Yeah. People yeah. still smoke cigarettes. I thought at least it was like vape life or something. <laughs> All right. Well, I got something I got hard life. <laughs> I got smoking. We're going to fix that one first. You don't smoke, do you? Who? No. Yeah, you. Oh, okay. All right. Smoking. All right. No, but yeah. Not since gonna... I got Crohn's. No smoking, man. Not since this guy. Yeah. Wasn't even worth it. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah but yeah fitness full circle i just want to get everybody working out there's the bonnie I, it was weird looking at this little amazing face jared wants to take a picture with all of us oh yeah, yeah. Jared, come right here I get okay it. can you see all of us all right you ready you gotta look up there at the white light yeah one, one, one three. Two, oh that's super cute <laughs> He's like, wait, I gotta take a picture. I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, good talk today. Good talk today. All those other girls are missing this one for sure. That's for sure. Um, you never know what's gonna come out of Warrior Hour, ladies. You just never know. Um, but I'm glad I recorded it so I can share it and let everybody know that we talked about finances and getting men on board. <laughs> All right, ladies, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday. I will see you guys tomorrow morning, okay? Bye. Love you, Mom. <laughs> Bye. Love you. Love you. <laughs>